of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also yes, with you. you let us pray we thank you O God that you have again brought us together on the Lord's Day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come through Christ our Lord amen, amen. welcome to this service of the word for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. We thank you for gathering with us and for finding us uh, here on YouTube. Um, you'll note that, uh, that the cast uh, today is, is the same cast as last week um, and that Reverend Paul and Sharla are still on their holidays and so please do include them uh, in your devotions this week for safe traveling mercies and rest um, and uh, recovery from uh, from all that uh, is going on and uh, that they will be refreshed for uh, the months to come. Uh, my name is the Reverend Robert Clifford and I'm the rector at All Saints Anglican Church in downtown Windsor. Joining me in studio, uh, the Reverend Ryan Boyvan, uh, the rector at St. David and St. Mark's here in Windsor and St. Andrew's uh, in La Salle. Also the Reverend uh, Elise Chambers, uh, the rector at the Parish of the Southern Trinity. Uh, joining us on the keyboards today, and as always, uh, Jonathan Kabaruka. We thank him for his ministry uh, among us. And also, uh, Chris Gavert will be uh, sh breaking open God's Word for us today and preaching. Uh, so we thank him for his, uh, his ministry as well. Join us now for our opening hymn. Uh, in common praise, uh, the hymnal it is number 330 on screen or on your song sheet. O praise ye the Lord. Thank you.
scriptures, remember that God loves us. Thereby, therefore, by the mercy, mercy of God, let us cease to do evil and learn to do good. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. God is merciful and kind. Though our sins are like scarlet, they become like snow. Be at peace, for your sins are washed clean by the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Our act of praise is in our Common Praise Book 354, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing, and it's also on your screen or in your book. hearts and take from our hands the burden of worthless things so that we may be ready to receive a greater gift the love of Jesus Christ our servant King Amen. Amen. God of hope by faith we know that you created the world and that what is seen is made by things that are not visible open our eyes to your presence among us that we may hear your word with clarity and a sureness of hope as we follow you in all righteousness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Our first reading is a reading from the book of Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices? Says the Lord, I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asked this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offerings is futile, because incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation. 
I cannot endure solemn, solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evils of your doings before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. A selection from Psalm 50. I invite you to join with me in the refrain, Our God will come and not keep silence. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and not keep silence. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Our God will come and not keep silence. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the righteousness of his cause, for God himself is judge. Our God will come and not keep silence. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. Our God will come and not keep silence. Consider this well. You who forget God, lest I rend you and there be none to deliver you. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, but to those who keep in my way will I show the salvation of God. Our God will come and not keep silence. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by our faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was yet to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he'd been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered himself faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith, without having received the promises. But from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in the way, in this way, make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, 
they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our gradual hymn is 309 in the Common Praise Book or in your bulletin or on the screen. Praise the Lord with the sound of trumpet. Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, Blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your positions, give alms. Make purses that do not wear out. For your treasure, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. My brothers and sisters, we find ourselves in the middle of the doldrum days of summer, contemplating the world that is around us. And God knows the past two years have provided us everything to be worried about. If it's not political unrest, it's war. If it's not war, it's inflation. If it's not inflation, it's another virus. So much to be worried about. And yet we're told today, in today's scripture, not to worry. 
Well, what could he possibly mean? Does it mean that I have to go and sell everything I own in order to be a faithful follower of the kingdom? I think sometimes what we do is we believe that the scriptures act as a, uh, a recipe for salvation. In other words, do these things and you'll be okay. But I think if any good exegesis of, of scripture, we have to understand the meaning and the context around it. What does it mean to have faith? We heard in the letter to the Hebrews about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, how they had faith. But if somebody would have told them all that they would have to go through in order to be an experienced member of faith, I bet you they'd say it's impossible. And yet here we are looking back on their lives and realizing that faith is something that we live in the moment. Let me give you a story. It's a parable. It's a story about two cousins. One cousin was on the farm, one lived in downtown Toronto. And the cousin, the city cousin, invited the country cousin to come and visit him. And as he met his cousin at Union Station, they emerged from the cavernous walls of Union Station out onto Young Street. And onto Young Street, they began walking down. And you could see the farmer caught up in all of the grandeur of the downtown city core, the noise, the honking the sirens, everything going on around them. And the cousin says, the city cousin says, don't you think this is great? This is amazing? And the country cousin says, well, it's something. And a little bit while later, while they're walking down the street, they come past one of the local banks, so one of the downtown banks, and the, the farmer cousin says to the city cousin, stop for a second, do you hear that? And the uh, city cousin says to him, well, what do you mean? I hear lots of things noise, I hear sirens, I hear uh, bells, I hear the cacophony of sound that a city makes. And he said, no, no, just a, just a second. He put his finger to his lip and he, he, he stopped and he, he looked towards the corner of the uh, bank door and he found a rock and he turned the rock over and there it was, a cricket. And as he, he pointed out the cricket, his city cousin said, how could you possibly hear that? And the country cousin said, it depends what you're listening for. A little while later, they're walking down the street, and somebody's cell phone went off, and as they reached in to the, grab their cell phone, a bunch of change followed out. Loonies and toonies fell out onto the street, and everybody around them turned and looked at the money falling to the ground, and his cousin said, see, it depends what you're listening for. I think if we take that as a parable for today's gospel, we can elicit what maybe faith is calling us to today. What is it that faith is calling us to today? Is to learn what it is we are listening for. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. I think it's interesting how we spend a lot of our time focused on future or past. We get caught up in the future and worried about where, what are we going to do tomorrow, what will happen. We can look at our churches and say, well, we have a church in a year or two, what's going to happen? Or we can look at our past and get so hung up. Eckhart Tolle writes, too much future creates anxiety and too much past creates depression. It's one of the privileges I have in celebrating funerals at one of our local funeral homes is to be caught up in people's now. It depends what you're listening for. I think the act of Christian faith is learning how to be present in the current moment, knowing that what we have now is everything we need to have, that God gives us what we need now. Again, had he told Isaac or Jacob or, or um, David everything that he would have to accomplish in their life, I'm sure they would have melted under the pressure. I can't do that. Yet if we look back on our own lives, and see all the things that we have gone through to get to this moment, if we were told all of those things, we probably would have collapsed under the weight of anxiety. Anxiety is a product of fear, and fear is the antithesis of faith. What is the number one expression in all scripture? Be not afraid. Be not anxious. Because whether you like it or not, no matter what we have to do in an hour from now or what happened an hour ago, you and I have no choice right now but to be with each other. So let's be here because God is, it, God is found in the present moment. God is not a future reality or a past reality. God's life is with us now. Do not be worried, little children. 
Keep your light lamps lit. Know what it is you're listening for. But it's so easy with the cacophony of noise on the internet, on the news stations, proclaiming all that is wrong with the world, that we fail to see the goodness of creation. If all we had to commit ourselves to is a group of people willing to commit to the present moment, we would be in a far better position. It's not, I'm not trying to be Pollyannish here. I'm not trying to suggest that all we need to do is have positive thoughts and not to suggest that the struggles and challenges aren't struggles and challenges. But in the context of the larger scheme, faith is knowing that even on Good Friday, God is still there. Our, uh, the symbol of our faith is the cross of Jesus Christ. We use an instrument of execution and torture to be our symbol of faith. Why? Why wouldn't we use the empty tomb as our symbol of faith hanging around our necks, but we use the cross? Because it is a constant reminder that even in our most challenging times, faith is found. In other words, but it depends what you're listening for. And that's why we have to train ourselves. That's what I believe our Sunday get-togethers are all about, is a training field to retrain our ears to learn what to listen for. The messages and the scriptures and then the homilies and the sermons that are given to you on weekend are meant to inspire and encourage you to go out and live the now, to be present to the now. This is what we have to, to train ourselves to listen for the crickets in the midst of noise. My brothers and sisters, perhaps that's what we can do on our week ahead. We are in the glorious days of summer and we can complain that it's too hot, but in five months from now, we'll be complaining it's too cold. We could worry about all these things, but maybe in this upcoming week, we can learn to listen for God's voice now. I'll leave you with this thought. In Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, he writes about he and a fellow prisoner uh, in, a, in Auschwitz always had to commit themselves. They made a choice. They said, we could either allow this place to destroy our soul or we can look for something good each day. Imagine that and the bowels of hell being able to find something to laugh at each day. He writes about how they were ladling out soup, this watery soup, and the hope was that the ladle would go down and maybe grab a few peas. And he laughed and he told his friends, one day we're going to be sitting at a rich banquet table and they're going to be ladling soup and we're going to tell them, go to the bottom. That's faith. That no matter how dark things are, our God is with us. Isn't that what the Eucharistic table teaches us? Emmanuel. Our God is with us. God is not about future or past. God has always been eternally now. Let that be our encouragement. Let that be our hope. And train our ears to listen for the crickets of the now. What is it that you want to listen for this week? Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the world responding to, O God of hope, with increase our faith. O oh God, your blessings are as plentiful as the stars above and as numerous as the grains of sand along the seashore. We come before you with grateful hearts as we pray for the church and the world. We uphold in prayer this week, especially the gathering of the Lambeth Conference. O oh God of hope, 
increase our faith. We pray for wisdom and guidance for all people and leaders of this world, that they may foster peace and justice and serve the common good. Let us persist in prayer for Ukraine and all of Eastern Europe. O God of hope, increase our faith. We pray for your church, that by your grace and our faith, we may serve you with constancy and love. O God of hope, increase our faith. We pray for those who are sick or suffering any need, that they would know your healing strength and find comfort through our faithful care. O God of hope, increase our faith. Help us to protect the goodness of your creation, that all may enjoy the precious blessings of this world as a foretaste of the next. O God of hope, increase our faith we remember those who have died and look to that heavenly city where with you and all your saints we will enter the everlasting heritage of your faithful sons and daughters O God of hope increase our faith holy God steadfast and true on you our hope is founded Receive the prayers of your faithful people, for our hearts are gladdened by our trust in you. Amen. Jesus said, Sell your possessions and give alms, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Honor God with a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and come into God's courts with praise. I invite you to consider um, how you can support uh, the many ministries that God is at work uh, doing in, in this area and in your area if you are joining us from afar. Uh, please do consider how you can support uh, the Scent, this ministry that you're participating in right now. And please do also remember the many ministries, the vital ministries of your home parish um, if you are joining us. Um, and, uh, and uh, staying uh, away from uh, on-site worship uh, at your home parish. Uh, that work continues uh, there, so please do support it with your, uh, your time, your talent, and your treasure. And while you do that, uh, join us in our offertory hymn, hymn number 601 in the Common Praise Hymnal, um, on screen or on your song sheet, God, whose giving knows no ending. Thank you.
receive all we offer you this day, and grant that in this Eucharist we may be enriched by the gifts of the Spirit. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us for worship this day. Um, a few announcements before we are blessed and sung on our way. Um, please do uh, consider signing up to receive the, uh, the weekly uh, bulletin of materials that come out from the Scent. Um, the subscription notice uh, may have been passed to you by whoever forwarded you the, this uh, order of worship for today's service. Do subscribe uh, to that and you can receive it yourself. Um, a few things that are coming up in the life of this community. Um, the uh, drive through food drive uh, that have been going on for, for all of the three years now of COVID, nearly three years of COVID. Uh, this month's edition uh, will be on August the 21st um, and uh, pick up points at All Saints downtown, St. Augustine of Canterbury um, in the East End and St. James Roseland in the South End. Um, on the 21st. Um, the proceeds from that will be going to uh, the Canterbury uh, College Chaplaincy Welcome Baskets uh, that will welcome uh, new students coming to Canterbury College. Uh, so please do consider items that you think would be necessary for uh, college students starting out perhaps uh, on their own for the first time. So uh, cleaning supplies and, and household uh, items, small household items, uh, as well as uh, as any food uh, that uh, you think a college kid would enjoy. Um, coming up uh, elsewhere in the city, uh, All Saints has uh, a chicken dinner coming up in September. Also look for details of uh, an even song uh, to celebrate the 60th anniversary of St. Leonard's House uh, on the 18th of September. Uh, the proceeds from the, uh, the plate that evening uh, will go to support the chaplaincy um, at St. Leonard's House. Uh, with that, I think Elise, uh, Reverend Elise, would you bless us on our way? Be not afraid, for it is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, an unveiling, unfailing treasure, an eternal blessing, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today is 379 in the Common Praise Hymn Book, um, Rejoice the Lord is King. It is also found on your screen and in the booklet.
serve, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you.